Let's try that again. Welcome to the video. Today we're gonna talk about expensive hubs like this one right here. Let's listen to it real quick. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Larry and this is Your Own Adventure. In today's video, we'll be talking about the hub that I just played for you. I'll call it a musical instrument today, but actually that's a secondhand wheel. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about secondhand wheels, what you can expect, and actually compare an i9 hub to this budget wheel set that I picked up for about $150 and see if it's worth upgrading to that, that second hand level and getting something really nice but spending a few more bucks. So if you want to learn more about the pitfalls and some of the stuff that you might not know about with second hand hubs like the i9, maybe it's a profile or maybe it's an, another high end hub that you're looking into. I'm going to try to explain some of those things from first-hand experience that I just learned and hopefully it'll help you in the future with your decisions. But let's get into it and talk about this budget-friendly wheel set first and then we'll get into that, that i9 wheel set which I got second-hand for about $400. But before we uh, jump into the, the sound comparison, I just want to say that Thank you everyone who's watching and I hope that everyone's doing well. Um, I've been filming in the studio a lot this month in the last month, not because of the whole situation going on out there, but actually because I have a lot of work to do with my classwork. So I haven't been able to focus a lot of time and shooting time more importantly on my YouTube videos. Um, I really, wish I could put more time in right now, but the semester is almost over, so I'll be getting back to uh, more featured videos and more higher production videos in, in the next couple weeks. Just bear with me a little while. I actually like doing these informative videos as well, so this will just be a, a supplemental a supplemental video in, in the YouTube world. So. Again, thanks for bearing with me, and I hope that you can learn something from these videos that I'm doing. That's it. This will be the first hub that we test. This is a Novatech D482TSBT, and this is on a WTBSX19 wheel set. This is like $150 on Amazon. I'll put it up to this mic first so you can really hear it, and then I'll put it up to the the decibel meter here so we could actually see those numbers as accurate as as it can be displayed. So yeah, not very loud. I'm going to get a better spin on it whenever I do it over here. Okay, we were jumping at around that 55 to 60 decibel mark, and the spikes on here, they were just from my hand making some noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 55 decibels. I'm gonna go grab the, the i9 wheel set and we could really test out to see what the difference is. Here is the i9 wheel set. This is a Trail 29 wheel set. This is a little bit older of a wheel, but it still has a really good hub in it. And let's just test it out and see what it sounds like up next to the microphone. So quite a difference and I could already see over here that it's spiking a lot higher. And we'll go ahead and see what that does next to it.
and that was reading at about 80 decibels. So that's just about 30 decibels higher than the other wheel set and I am in no way an audio engineer so I can't really explain that number to you but 30 decibels is 30 decibels um, I'm being a little bit exaggeratory but you know this isn't the most scientific test it does show that there is a huge difference in that that sound but aside from sound let's talk a little bit about what you can expect from purchasing a secondhand wheel set that's higher end and might have a higher pri price tag, so you really want to watch out for what you're purchasing. So first and foremost, make sure that the driver is going to match with your drivetrain. If you have a, a SRAM drivetrain and there's a Shimano driver back here, then it, it's probably not going to work and vice versa. So make sure that if you're buying from somebody secondhand, that they're very clear about it and they're not trying to just uh, get over on you and get rid of a wheel set that they're, they're not using. The guy that I purchased this from was really cool. He seemed like a good guy and wasn't really trying to just get rid of something that he didn't need. He talked to me about it and I, I trusted the person. Now with that being said, uh, the more information that you have going into a purchase, the better. So number one would be the driver in the back. Whoa! <laughs> Almost knocked that over. Uh, make sure it's going to match with your drivetrain. Number two is going to be the the rim width or the wheel width. So this is not boost spacing. This is just uh, 142 through axle spacing, which is what they would consider non-boost. Uh, this is the first, really the first boost spacing, and then 148 came along and really widened things out, and then. Uh, I don't know, I think it's 154 is the next one up. Probably wrong about that, but there is boost and then there's super boost and this is just standard through axle spacing. So this is 142 and I didn't really look into that before I purchased the, the wheel set. So I'll have to get an adapter, which is possible to do, but the one downfall about this is you'll probably end up with a more narrow rim. So if you're having a, a really wide tire on your, on, your, uh, on your bike, then just check out the, the rim width and make sure that it'll hold the tire that you have. I'm okay with it, I'm gonna make it work, but again, just make sure that you're looking into the spacing and really know all of those metrics before you go into purchasing. Again, you can make it work, I'm going to get an adapter and use this on my stump jumper, but not the best scenario, but that's kind of what you are going to deal with at the secondhand market. Okay, lastly and probably most importantly is making sure that the driver isn't damaged in any way. This one does have some wear on it, but again, you could you could buy replacements for these and the thing that you want to make sure of is that the paws inside aren't missing or really messed up and in this one in particular uh, I had to actually fix and replace the paw to make it work and that wasn't because the guy sold me uh, a bad product he actually had a different driver on this wheel and this driver was in a box and was missing a paw and I just took it out of the other driver and put it into this one and it works um, but make sure that you are looking into that if you have the, the foresight to. And now with this information, maybe you do. Um, you could actually pull apart this hub and check it out inside, and I'll do that real quick to show you. It's not this easy, but I already have the end caps off of it, so it's just pulling out. But if you just use the, the through axle, you could actually wiggle off the end caps and then this is the driver and it has some some paws in it that you can't really see. But just make sure that they're all there. There's like six of them and that's what engages into the, the uh, splines in the hub. And I'm actually going to be doing a repair and breakdown of this, this hub so you could see exactly what it is inside and hear it from somebody who isn't like a, you know, a wizard, you know? 
it's hard to watch so many videos of people who have been working on bikes, specifically mountain bike bikes, mountain, <laughs> whoa, mountain, mountain bike, bike, bikes, 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 specifically mountain bike products and these higher end products. It's hard to watch those and get the, the concepts through. So I'm going to break down this hub and show you exactly what it looks like, but just make sure that the driver is in good shape and you should be Gucci. Anyways, that's it for this video. I know it's not that technical. There's not too much going on with it, but informative nonetheless, and I hope that it helped you out in some way. You got to hear two different hubs being compared, which I actually haven't seen too many videos like that. If you have any questions about the, the i9 hub, then please just let me know. Again, I'll be doing a breakdown of that, that hub in the next couple weeks. My semester is almost over, so I'll have a lot more time to focus on making really nice videos as opposed to just talking head videos. But let me know what you think of them either way. If you like videos like this, just let me know. I could do more information videos with more, more uh, production on the back end to make them more fun to watch. Go out there and create your own adventure however you can. Spread some positivity and I'll see you on the next one. I have some in, uh, exciting new things coming in within the next couple months and it'll be really fun because I'll be able to experiment with prototyping parts. I'll be able to do some experimenting with design and it'll be on this channel. So stay tuned.